one. Okay. So over the past four years, really, um, we've been investigating the many problems that are facing gibbons across Southeast Asia. But particularly, um, we've been having a focus on Indonesia. It has um, almost 73% um, coverage of uh, users of social media, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp. Um, I don't remember the numbers on TikTok, that's relatively new. But unfortunately, we are now seeing far more gibbons being sold on social media platforms especially like Facebook, then we are seeing what is what is happening in the um, in the in the markets. So I would like to share with you a short update. So what you can see here in the green, um, so this is across 1022 Facebook groups from 2015 to 2020. The green bars represent wanting to sell advertisements. The red bars are people who would like to buy a gibbon and the blue bars represent the total number of individual gibbons observed for sale. Duplicate, obviously duplicate um, adverts were removed. But one of the very big problems with identifying duplicate um, posts and duplicate um, sites is that many of these pictures uh, that are used are of very young gibbons, less than three years old, some most of the time less than two. Sometimes the gibbons are so small, it is very difficult to identify the species that we're actually looking at. And I'll explain this in a little bit more later. So next slide, there we go. So the majority of um, search words that people are using, Wa, which is Indonesian for uh, gibbon, Siamang, which is the slightly larger uh, black gibbon with a throat sack, Unko, uh, Sumatran word for, for gibbon, no keyword, uh, black monkey, doll, um, toy, uh, are all words that, that are coming up. But as you can see here, in fact, you simply just need to type in the in Indonesian word for gibbon, and that is more than 50% of the time you will come up with an advert uh, selling, selling a gibbon for you. When we look at the prevalence of uh, social media posts uh, selling gibbons across uh, the Indonesian archipelago, what we see is that gibbon online trade occurred across five of the Indonesian islands, Java, Sumatra, Kalimantan, Bali and Sulawesi. Now, Bali and Sulawesi are places where gibbons are not native, but gibbons do occur on Kalimantan, Sumatra and Java. Um, main hotspot for online gibbon trade was Java, with a total of 383 different Facebook user accounts observed to be selling gibbons. East Java was the main hub um, of tr for trade in, in Java, and you can see in the, the red colour is highlighting the uh, the different levels of, of trade. Sumatra was the second highest with 169 accounts um, and the majority of the trade in Sumatra was recorded in, in Riau province which if you can see my mouse is this province here. Um, so we are seeing a lot of trade uh, in gibbons predominantly from the two most populated islands that is Java and Sumatra. Um, and, and a little bit less of it coming from uh, Kalimantan. And as I said, Bali and Sumatra are not native, uh, not islands where gibbons are native, and yet trade is occurring there. When we look at the species that are being sold, um, we're seeing predominantly uh, the siamang, the larger uh, black gibbon with a throat sack. We're also we're seeing the Agile gibbons from Sumatra, we're seeing a large trade in Javan gibbons and the Mullers and the Bornean white bearded in red and yellow are the ones from the island of Borneo and we're seeing a lot less of those uh, coming into the trade. And what I should highlight here is that this is trade of Indonesian gibbons within Indonesia. These uh, animals, as far as we can work out, are not being sold, Javan gibbons are being sold internationally. But this particular trade that we're looking at here is all within Indonesia. And this has become a little bit of a, actually a big bit of a problem. 
when speaking to funders who are very keen to tackle international trade. But of course, um, this is national illegal national trade. These species are all protected under Indo Indonesian law. They're all um, classified on the IUCN red list as endangered. Um, it is completely illegal to be uh, trafficking in these animals. Um, yet the majority of the trafficking is, is occurring uh, within Indonesia being sold to uh, Indonesian buyers. When we look at the, um, the uh, age distribution of the gibbons, as I mentioned, um, they're youngsters, the vast majority, uh, as you can see in blue, some adult uh, and, uh, and some others um, unidentified. The unidentified is often because of malnutrition, uh, which gives it uh, makes it more difficult to identify the age of the gibbon. If we look at the frequency of annual publications mentioning gibbon seizures in Indonesian media, um, we're actually we're actually seeing quite a, an increase in that. Now, obviously, in 2020, as the pandemic hit, trade etc. was becoming increasingly um, less regulated. Uh, and so we did see a decrease in uh, confiscations and a decrease in the prevalence of um, publications about this. If we go on to look at the annual number of court cases involving gibbons and the number of live animals and body parts involved. So in the red bars, you can see the number of cases. In green, the green line is the uh, number of live gibbons and the blue um, are live gibbons or gibbon parts. And again, there's a fairly, there's a lot of variation in um, the prevalence of gibbons. But as you can see in 2020, fewer, far fewer cases, but an increasing trade in uh, the number of the number of live gibbons and and indeed in uh, gibbon parts. When we look at the total number of um, wildlife related uh, wildlife related crimes. So in green is the number of um, cases and in yellow is the number of um, number of prosecutions. And it's increasing. As, we can, as we're seeing an increasing number of, and not just gibbons, but other um, Indonesian and Malaysian and, and Asian wildlife. And as we saw also from Brazil in the previous uh, talk that we're seeing an increase in, in use of social media platforms for, um, for selling wildlife, unfortunately. And all of this results in, of course, a increased pressure on um, rescue centers. Both rescue centers, uh, which are sanctuaries, which will offer a permanent, permanent home to the gibbons, but in an increased pressure on the rehabilitation centers who are trying to return uh, ex-pet gibbons back to the wild. And that, of course, is increasing pressure on um, wild habitat and finding locations which are suitable for these animals to return back to the wild. And one of the things we've been doing through the, um, the IUCN section on small apes and our partners in Indonesia, Gibbonesia, um, is looking at uh, the number of... Uh, the recommended prosecution pre and after, sorry, before and after in-house training. Um, and as we can see with, with this, after the in-house training, the, um, the prison sentences which were recommended actually increased following in-house training with the authorities, with le the legal system, with the courts to help explain the problems and really kind of hammer home the importance of protecting the law. Um, Indonesian uh, law con and considers uh, the extreme importance of all wildlife as natural resources belonging to the Indonesian people. Um, but often because of a lack of awareness throughout the entire uh, legal prosecution system from the police up to the judges, um, there often are very lenient sentences uh, passed down to people who are convicted of um, trafficking in gibbons. So um, I'm not going to, uh, th this is a very short uh, uh, presentation, obviously, and I'm, I'm delighted to have been able to, to share this information with you. Um, I've put up a couple of the um, websites 
Uh, Gibbon Asia uh, is predominantly in Indonesian. The idea with Gibbon Asia is to create, and these animals are being sold online. So let's identify and tackle the buyers through the same platform they are using in order to purchase Gibbons. Let's come up with a positive campaign. Let's really push forward with really encouraging people not to buy Gibbons. If they have got a Gibbon, then give it to the rescue center, providing people with information rather than a constant negative stream of persecution um, against people is really try and engage with them on these same platforms. So of course, please, um, you know, feel free to, to, uh, to check out these, these resources. Um, and finally, I have to acknowledge our funders, Synchronicity Earth and the Arcus Foundation, um, and the incredible uh, knowledge and support which has been, been provided by International Animal Rescue Indonesia um, in, order to, in order to implement this, this work. It's ongoing. Gibbonesia have this um, ongoing campaign. We are looking at um, costs of gibbons. Uh, it certainly seems that these are um, animals that are being bought by people with disposable income. Um, people are sharing their stories of having gibbons on, on, on social media as well. So we want to reach out to those people and say, you know, do you realize these animals actually belong in the wild? And of course, the hope is that once the campaign has proved effectiveness using sound science and sound social, uh, social survey data, that we can roll this out in other countries. So we can roll this out in Malaysia, where we know there is a problem. We can roll this out in Thailand and other countries where there is a, an increasing amount of gibbons being sold on social media. It's already proved relatively effective uh, at combating the online trade in, uh, and trade in slow lorises, which International Animal Rescue pioneered. And using that same principle, we hope to be able to make an effective change for the gibbons, but we must work with the rescue centers so they have the capacity to receive the animals once they're confiscated. And with that, um, I would like to thank everybody very much for listening. Um, I am happy to receive emails or um, contact through the, the, um, the website. Um, and yes, thank you very much for your attention.